just found a question. Um, just kind of scrolled up to the top, and I actually want to ask this, you love this, this one. This uh, because... back and forth on us both going through the questions. I, I think this is a great idea. Keep going. So this is from Abbas, I think. Uh, Abbas Kareem. And that is, a. do you prefer a standalone React on the front end with Django on the back end or a React app inside of Django? Now, for my answer, I've usually put React inside of Django. But I'm curious in how you do that. Do you just have like an API and then... Yeah, so like having, we're not talking about server-side rendering. We're talking about actually having um, the code base inside of the Django project. Is that what you mean by that? Yeah, yeah. Um, it depends on how big of a project that you're working on. So my Coding for Entrepreneurs project, I have them separate. So the, the Coding for Entrepreneurs user interface, the front end of it, uh, is in a completely separate project because it there's a lot of code that goes into that one. And then the Django backend, uh, it's also in a completely separate project and I work on them separately. Uh, sometimes I have to work on them hand in hand uh, because of the API that they need to both interact with. Um, but that's that's a good case of them being separate. Uh, but when I start projects on a small scale, when it is a small scale, I have them together uh, inside of the same, same code base. Um, and the servers themselves, I always use a production grade static file server for all of my JavaScript. And that's usually AWS uh, as three buckets and ideally a CDN on top of that with CloudFront. Um, every once in a while, I'll use Google Cloud Storage um, for the st static files. Um, but the there are a number of other static file options out there that that I think are worth checking out as well. Um, but that's, that's essentially how I, I go about doing that. Now, server-side rendering for Re React, I, um, I haven't done it with Django yet. It's uh, usually if I'm going to go that route and have server side rendering, um, which essentially means that the React project renders on the server instead of in the client, um, this adds some capability for SEO. If that's the case, then I'm using Node.js and Express.js and stuff like that to actually render out the server side rendering of things. Um, adding it to Django adds a layer of complexity that uh, I don't think it's necessary when you can just use some of the other JavaScript tools that are built in and, and really made for doing the server side rendering for React. So hopefully that answers. Really, really cool answer. <laughs> oh, thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah, really cool because I, I, I usually just put it straight into uh, into Django, probably not the best method. I've, I've separated them before, but in a production environment, I've always just kind of kept them together just because of the way that I learned it. But that's cool. That actually gives me insight. That's yeah, I mean, the the building, you definitely want to build. So the actual end product that you're building in a React project, this is true with Vue and Angular as well. Um, so when you build the production build, that absolutely can and probably should go to the Django static files for Django to manage that. It doesn't have to, of course. Um, but if you're big on Django, then you probably would go that that method. Uh, and I, I definitely will release something related to this soon um, on my channel. So make sure you subscribe to get that. But the, the main thing is, <laughs> got to plug it, right? Um, the main thing is yep. that um, your production build, Django's working with your production build and you're doing production builds for your React projects, for your JavaScript projects. So yeah, 